Zulra, affectionately known as the Money Snake. Now you must have up the courage to finally go to Zulra to complete your first kill to complete the diary. Or you may be going to get one of the items Zulra provides to upgrade your gear set. Well, look no further. Hopefully this guide will provide you with all the information you need to know about Zulra to ensure that you get your first kill. First, we'll go through the useful add-ons, how to get there, the recommended stats, gear, and inventory setups, and also the boss mechanics and some tips and tricks to help you along the way. So before we get into the contents of this guide, I'm going to post the timestamps of the video into the description as well as on screen now so that you can navigate the video as you like. The first thing that we're going to briefly touch on is useful add-ons. The first add-on that I'm going to talk about is the Zulra Helper. Zulra Helper is great for those that are just returning back to Zulra and you forgot the rotations, or you may be a new player that's just starting your grind out of Zulra. This add-on will tell you where to stand on the island and which snake will spawn next in the sequence of the rotation. Later on in the video, I'll show you a bit more about this add-on and how it works during a kill. The next add-on I would recommend using is Ground Markers. Now, we briefly touched on this in my previous Corruptor Gauntlet guide. However, I'll go over it very quickly again. Basically, Ground Markers is a function where you're able to mark a tile on the island so that you know exactly where you're going to be standing once you click there. I'd also recommend downloading tile indicators as well. Tile indicators is very, very useful, and we touched on it in the Corruptor Gauntlet guide again. And basically, this will allow you to understand where you are clicking to. So it will tell you what your destination tile is. Timers is another great add-on that allows you to understand what is left on your anti-venom or anti-poisons and how long its duration is for. And also the cooldown for your vengeance, if that's going to be something you use. Or even maybe your thrall uh, spells on your case book. So timers, another great add-on. And finally, the last add-on I recommend downloading is boost information. This is a great tool that allowing you to understand how long is left on your potions how long is left on your combat stats and also what is left on your anti-venoms and your anti-poisons so a great tool once again to give you a bit more information while you're doing zulra next up we're going to talk about how to get there there's three ways in which you can get to zulra the first one being via a charter ship you can pay 3.2k GP to a sailor on a ship, which will take you to Port Tyrus. And then from Port Tyrus, you head east, then south, then southeast. The second option you can use is the fairy rings. If you use the code BJS at any fairy ring in Gilanor, you can take yourself to this small island. Then use the stepping stones to get across to Zalandra. You will need 76 agility, but you can use a summer pie with 71 agility to get that 5 agility boost. My recommended route in order to get to a fairy ring and the quickest I found was via a Ardoin Cape to the monastery, just south of the Ardoin Zoo. Then head over northeast to the Tower of Life and use the fairy ring there to get to the BGS code. And the last option is the Zalandra Direct Teleport. Now you can buy these on the Grand Exchange for 20k each, which is quite a costly method, but you might make your money back at Zulra. But my recommended route would be the code BGS via the fairy rings because you're only going to be saving a few seconds if you use the Zalandra Teleports. And if you are an Iron Man, the fairy ring method is certainly the best way and chances are you'll get some teleports when you're killing Zulra. You'll also need to speak to the High Priestess Zul to gain access to Zulra during the Regicide quest. You don't have to complete the Regicide quest fully, but you just need to speak to the Priestess once. The final thing I'll mention is that you should always redeem your items from Princess Gwen if you die for 100k GP each time. Otherwise, if you die again, you will lose everything in the coffer. So make sure that you always pick your items up if you die. However, for the first 50 KC, it is free of charge if you die. So let's talk about some of the recommended combat stats and skills that you're going to need for Zulra. First, I would look at getting 80 HP, 75 magic, 75 range, 75 defense and 45 plus prayer because you're going to need overhead prayers for Zulra and if you get higher prayer to then unlock augury and rigor by getting one of the scrolls from chambers that will be useful as well however I will say that I used eagle eye and mystic might and managed to get quite a few kills through them prayers you probably could do this with less combat stats but it's not recommended over a long period of time but if you're going for a single kill, 
you probably will be able to get away with a few kills just on lower stats. There's some of the skills that I would also recommend getting before you start doing a long grind as Zora is construction. Now, if you get to 82 construction, you can actually boost to get the rejuvenation pool and the fairy rings in your POH. This will allow you to restore your stamina, your HP and your prayer points by using the rejuvenation pool in your POH. And also you, you're able to use the fairy rings to get yourself back to Zalandra through the BGS code that we mentioned earlier in the video. Also, you're going to need alongside this at least 71 agility. And by doing this, you can actually get across the stepping stones to Zalandra, but you are going to need a summer pie, which will give you a five plus boost in agility, which will take you to 76 or you can get 76 agility straight out let's talk about some of the core gear pieces that you're going to need for zulra first off we'll talk about the expensive method which is the ring of suffering now the ring of suffering will set you back about 12 mil gp but if you can imbue it via nightmare zone it will double the defense and prayer stats and also you can store multiple ring of recalls in the ring of suffering which means that you can save some inventory slots alternatively the cheap method is the ring of recalls you can get a a recall for about 800 gp at this moment in time and it will give you 40 recalled hits before it breaks but it may require you to take another ring of recoil in your inventory during the fight as you may be dealing with more snakelings if the fight lasts a bit long another great core piece is the serpentine helm now this will set you back between 1.9 and 2 mil gp however it will be very useful when it comes to dealing with any of the venom that you get from zora and the snakelings and it will save you multiple inventory slots by getting rid of your anti-poisons or anti-venom potions. It's got great defensive stats, but it will reduce your DPS as it's not as good as some other helms out there. And also the supply cost, which is from Zora Scales, can be very costly. And the last item on the core pieces is the Slayer Helm imbued. I would recommend getting your Slayer Helm imbued as it doubles the stats. And I'd always recommend, use the sl recommend using the Slayer Helm on task. However, it does mean you will need to bring an anti-venom or an anti-poison in your inventory to deal with the venom and it also increases your max hit with a slayer staff is that is weapon of your choosing but we'll go into that very shortly now there's a variation of gear that you could take into zora and you can find a wiki online to find a table which will tell you which item is superior to the other but in this instance we're going to talk about an expensive setup and a budget setup on the expensive setup we've got a couple of the key items that we discussed earlier in the video one being the serpentine helm and the second the ring of suffering now in the range setup we've gone for some god dehyde the toxic blowpipe the necklace of anguish and the assembler and in the mage setup we've gone for the arum's top and bottom the trident of the swamps the occult the mage book the bracelet of torture the eternal boots and also the ring of suffering this setup will probably cost about 30 mil plus but overall over a long period of time this is going to get you the most consistent kills something further to add about the expensive setup is that if you can't afford some of the items that you can see on screen and it's not in your budget don't worry there's items that obviously you can downgrade to and it won't affect your dps and your defense too much but just bearing in mind that it's something to work towards which is going to give you give you even more consistent kills over time in terms of the budget setup for range we've gone for the god dehyde coif the black dehyde top and bottoms barrows gloves msb imbued amethyst arrows ava's accumulator and the fury and for the mage setup we've gone for the farseer helm the imbued saradonian cape the occult the mystic robe top bottom and boots the barrel's gloves the mage book and the warp scepter there's one item in there you may have not seen before but that item is called the warp scepter which released on the 13th of september through the quest called the path of gloffrey and you can actually get the item from a terror bird which is in one of the new slayer caves which is one in 320 but we'll touch on that a little bit later on in the video noting that void is a viable option as well for less switches but it does lower your dps and defense stats now, there is a variation of magic and range weapons that you can use at Zulra. I won't go into every single item on this list. As you can see, it's very uh, clear in the eye of which item is best. However, there is one item that does stand out to me in terms of the magic weapons, especially if you're a low-level Iron Man or you're just starting out at Zulra and you're on a low budget, and it's the Warp Scepter. You can actually acquire this from the Path of Gloffrey quest. By completing the quest, you need to then go to the new Slayer Cave, kill either the Terror Birds or the Tortoises, and it's a 1 in 320 chance of the Warp Scepter dropping. This will require 62 magic 
magic to equip and it will have 20,000 charges. Each cast costs around 110 GP per cast and it takes two chaos runes and five earth runes. So this is certainly the go-to item if you are a low level or you're on a budget. In terms of the range weapons, Bofa and the crystal armor is certainly the best and it will unlock a range only method for Zulra. And then following from there is the blowpipe and I would recommend using the Addy darts. And there's not much DPS difference between both rune and Addy darts, but the difference in cost is certainly expensive. In terms of spell books, it's completely down to yourself which one you prefer to use and it's also once again down to your budget. But I normally use the Arceus book because I get to use the Thralls for extra DPS and if I didn't have a rejuvenation pool I could use the Death Charge. But if you're using Fire Wave spells then obviously the normal spell book is going to be for you but you could also take some cheap teleports to teleport out of Zulra so you don't need to take any teleportation tabs or you can use the lunar spell book and use vengeance and also the cure me spell which will help you if you don't have any anti-venoms or any anti-poisons the cure me spell is very very useful and the vengeance spell is it can be useful at times but the snakelings normally take the hit for the vengeance which can be very triggering the last thing that we're going to talk about is inventory setups i've included an expensive inventory and a budget inventory in the expensive inventory we've gone with the manta rays which restore 22 hit points per Food, and also some Karen bombs to help you with some combo eating. We've also got some house teleports in there and a Draymond staff to allow you to get back to Zolandra via the BGS code fairings. But of course, if you've done the elite diaries for Draenor and Lumbridge, then you won't need the Draymond staff. I've also included a divine ranging potion as well, which will give you consistent DPS while you're doing your grind at Zulra. In the budget setup, we've gone for the Bastion potion, which includes a super defense potion and a super ranging potion, saving you one inventory space, an anti-venom, a Draymond staff and an Ardoin cape. The reason for the Ardoin cape and the Draymond staff together is because you can use this as a budget option to get back to Zalandra via the fairy ring near the Tower of Life. All you need to do is teleport to the monastery, run northeast to the Tower of Life and use the fairy rings. Now if you do decide to go with the expensive inventory and your budget can stretch this far then it may be worth taking an imbued heart for some extra mage DPS while you're using the trident or a warp scepter or the Ivan staff and if you are able to get your hands on the thread from TOA then this will improve your room pouch by giving it an extra slot for some more rooms. This will be useful if you're using the fire spells method because then you'll be able to teleport as well as use your fire spells. So when you take the boat to Zulra, you'll crash land on the island. Zulra will appear in his green form and start spitting venom clouds around the island. While he's doing this, you'll have about 20 seconds before the real fight starts. So my advice would be is to take the time to put your ground markers down. Now, if you don't get it the first time round, that's fine. Just teleport out and come back. These are the ground markers that you need to place down on the island. These are the places that are going to be standing while you're fighting the different forms of Zulra. So once you place the ground markers down on the island and you're ready to go for the kill, the first mechanic you need to know about is the different forms of Zulra. On screen now is a tip sheet for the different attack styles and overhead prayers that you need to be using when you're fighting against the different forms. It's worth noting that on the blue Tanzanite form that he will occasionally attack with ranged attacks, but the best thing to do here is not to change your prayer from magic, but just to tank the hits and making sure that you eat up because if you get hit by the snakelings and the ranged attack at the same time, you may be comboed out. Magma has also got his own special attack, which is the red snake. He'll attack you with melee and if you get hit by the melee attack it will essentially stun you knock you back and you'll take some hefty damage way to deal with this is to move on to the alternative ground marker that you've placed down to make sure you avoid his damage he will then try to strike again all you need to do is make sure that you move back to the original marker that you were stood on also in general zulra has two different special attacks the first special attacks is the venom clouds zulra will spit green orbs onto the floor which will form into a cloud if you stand in the radius of the cloud you'll take damage every tick but you will not be envenomed 
The second special attack you need to be aware of is the snakeling spawns. Zora will spit some white blobs onto the floor which will spawn snakelings. You don't need to worry about them too much, just make sure that your HP is high enough so that you don't get comboed out as they can hit a maximum of 15. Your ring of recall or your ring of suffering will deal with the snakelings by backlashing some damage that you take back right at them. The last mechanic to talk about is the jad phase. It sounds scarier than it actually is as you've probably done the fight caves before but it's actually quite straightforward. All you need to do is make sure that you are praying the relevant attack that he attacks you with. So if you're standing on the left hand side of the island as part of a rotation and he attacks you with mage then you are going to pray mage. He will then follow up with another attack which will be the range attack and then mage then range and so on and so forth. He will always attack you with mage first on the left hand side of the island. On the right hand side of the island he will attack you with range first so you need to pray range and then he will attack with mage then range then mage and so on and so forth. This is what the animation looks like when he's about to attack. He bows his head forward and that's when you know he's about to attack with his attack style. Just make sure that you are changing prayer just before he bows his head. So when you crash land on the island, you need to head over to the eastern side of the island and start attacking the Serpentine form with Mage. As you can see in the Zora Helper, it shows you it's the Serpentine's form because it's green. And then the next form is a Tanzanite, so you click the Tanzanite form on the Zora Helper and attack it with range. As you're going along here, you need to make sure that you are praying appropriately, changing your gear sets appropriately, and keeping an eye on where to stand on the Zora Helper. On the Zora Helper, it will tell you where to stand with the X, and the circle that's coloured will tell you which form is going to be spawning next. It's all about just being calm and collective when fighting Zora. There's nothing much more to it, and a lot of people do get intimidated by the different rotations. But trust me, if you just take a bit of time, just as you're as the different forms are coming out and you're making sure that your prayer is appropriately on and also you've got the right gear set and paying attention to the Zora Helper then that is the best thing to do. If you do lose where you are on the, on the Zora Helper just teleport out and just come back and start over. It's fine. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a big deal. You just need to try and learn as you're going along and it, just not to get flustered when a different form comes out. So as you can see here, we're still making our way through the rotation. This is the fourth of the rot the fourth rotation, I believe. There's four rotations in total. The third rotation is probably the easiest, but my advice would be is just to try every single rotation and try to learn as you're going along. Now we're getting to the second to last phase, which is going to be the last phase before Jad. So the Tanzanite spits out some Venom Clouds, and now Jad is about to spawn. Always attack the jad phases with mage as this is going to be the serpentine form and just as he's bowing his head just make sure you're changing your prayer appropriately come to the final phase of the rotation and it's the tanzanite form attack it with range and as you can see the rotation the rotation starts again go to the top of the zora helper and press the refresh button and a new rotation will start now you can either at the end of the rotation decide you're going to leave or you can carry on with the fight if you've got enough supplies and that is a kill. I really do hope that this guide has helped you. It has been a long one and I apologise, but I tried to consolidate as much information into the guide as possible so that you've got everything you need to know before you go into Zulra. If you have enjoyed the guide, then please do drop it a like and also consider subscribing to the channel so you never miss any of our content. I really hope you have a really good day and uh, enjoy your grind and hopefully you'll get one of them special items very, very soon. Take care for now and I'll see you in the next one.